Okay. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Welcome to another episode of Dealing with People and Business. I'm excited to, today to bring to y'all this current episode of Dealing with People and Business. <clears throat> and this is uh, about courage and motivation. Courage and motivation. I believe motivation as a desire, what you believe to be worthwhile. And many people go through life never getting in touch with their greatness because of their lack of motivation for themselves. Sorry. Or, uh, at what I was saying, they have the lack of motivation to push themselves or because they have failed to believe something more challenging. Many a flower have. All right, let me get, let me finish this conversation, and because I need to concentrate and get in here and get my cup of gel. I'm gonna sit here and I'm gonna talk business, dealing with business and people. There will be also. Uh, next giveaway coming up and hold on one second hi good morning top of the morning to you can, can I get a large coffee uh, pumpkin spice coffee yes sir can I sugar yes okay that's it that's it nothing to eat no no nothing to eat I don't need to get niggeritis this early in the morning. Oh, okay. <laughs> All right. How much is it? Two nineteen. Two nineteen. You got it, sweetness. Bye bye. All right. Let me let me get off the horn and uh, I'll continue talking with y'all in a second. Okay. As I was saying, many of flowers have bloomed unceasingly, and many has wasted its bloom. Upon the cold mist air. It's translated as. Many of talent a person has gone unnoticed. And the world never had a chance. To get exposed to that talent. Because that person did not take the time. To begin to express or demonstrate. Or to motivate themselves. In the direction to bring back. In which they came in the universe to bring. How can you measure your motivation? How can you evaluate your motivational scale on 1 to 10? Let's do this mentally. How do you rate yourself from 1 to 10? Your mental attitude about yourself. How you feel about you. How do you feel about life? How you rate yourself on a scale of 1 to 10 in terms of your physical appearance, in terms of your health? Do you take care of yourself? Are you allowing yourself to get overweight and out of shape? Are you conscious of your health? Are you watching the foods that you take into your body? Do you make a deliberate effort to exercise? Uh, we, we cannot help getting older, but we, we, can, we do get old. But many of us get old before our time because many of us don't take time to take care of ourselves. Your environment is your good in indicator on the scale of one to ten, is it a, is it what you want to is it what you want it to be? We don't take time to take care of yourself ourselves. On a scale of one to ten, is it what you do? You find yourself desirable? The job or career that you're involved in. Eighty five percent of the American public are unhappy with their jobs. It's it's unreal. Are you spending eight hours a day just doing time, doing something that you don't find challenging, that does not make you stretch further, that does not stimulate 
that does not inspire, that does not have a sense of fulfillment? Does it affect how you feel about yourself, the level of motivation, your relationships? What kind of impact does it have on your life? Is it a toxic relationship? Does it drain you or does it build you up? Ask yourself that. How motivated are you to do something about it? Your contribution, your actions. What are you giving? Many people will leave the universe without a trace. No one will know you were there. In fact, under their name, they could put under their name, not used up. <laughs> will anybody know that you came this way? What contribution are you giving? What will remain? What will be different? Because you came this way. Someone once said, life is our gift to us that God has given us. And how we live our life is our gift to God. What kind of gift are you formulating? Is it a gift that you like to take back and do something else before you turn it in? <laughs> Think about that. What can we do? What are some of the keys that we can begin to use to motivate ourselves when our batteries run low? Because I don't care who you are and what you do. And sometimes you are going to get uptight. And sometimes you are going to get into a rut. And nothing you do works out. And sometimes it just seems like you don't have the will to do anything. Sometimes you act like you're punch drunk. You're just waiting for life. You're just doing time. Doing time. Day in and day out. Just looking at non-discriminatory television. <laughs> you know, I'm telling you, it's unreal. Motivation, you got to motivate yourself. Anything that's on, you're just looking. It's unreal. You got to look at things that's going to add meaning in your life. It makes you, some of these things make you depressed, uh, feeling powerless, useless, and bored. What do you do? How do you get yourself out of this rut? When you know you could do more than what you could do, but you're not doing anything about it, you get angry at yourself. How do you get out of that rut? How do you motivate yourself to get out of this rut? One of the things you must do is that you must be involved and in working on achieving self-mastery. You must work on yourself continuously. Never be satisfied with yourself. Always know that as you invest in your effort and time and you, that's the greatest ability that you will ever get. That's the greatest human ability. Having the ability to change is the best and greatest thing that we have over animals. A dog can only be a dog. He can't be anything but a dog. A tree can't be anything but a tree. A human can have unlimited potential. And by concentrating on you and developing you, you can transform your life wherever you are right now. So you want to work on yourself. You want to read books that inspire and motivate you. You want to listen to tapes over and over again. And I suggest that you listen to tapes when you first get up in the morning. When you first wake up. The first uh, 20 minutes, you want to control the first spirit of your day. The first, uh, let's see, the first 20 minutes of when you wake up, your mind is, is, is operating at 10 point, I think it's 10.5, uh, yeah. 10.5 wave cycles per second. I know that doesn't make sense to some of you, but uh, the point that I'm trying to make is that's when the subconscious is most impressionable. Whatever you hear in the first 20 minutes, when you first wake up, the first 10 minutes, 20 minutes is the most important because that's when you're closer to your subconscious mind. That's when the mind is first impressionable. The first 20 minutes after you wake up. Whatever you hear, the first 
20 minutes will affect the spirit of your day. Listen with relaxed belief, believing that this can happen for you. By, and by listening, you're listening over and over again. You will get a breakthrough. You can, you've been listening to the same tape for months, and then you listen to something that you've never heard before, and it has a special meaning in life, and you find some special insight. I can't believe I didn't see that. It happens all the time. So you want to be involved and de constantly developing yourself. Most people won't do that. Most people will take that kind of effort and invest that kind of energy in themselves because they will fall prey in the conversation. Oh, no, don't do that. You don't have time for that. You're too busy. Most people won't do this. They won't go to lectures. They won't take time to go to classes to improve themselves. And as you continue to work on yourself, you will begin to work on yourself and expand yourself and, and see a vision. And you'll begin to work towards self-mastery. And you'll be able to see a reflective image of yourself and your social life and your relationships, everything. So concentrate on developing yourself. Because if you don't, I guarantee you, I guarantee you, you're going to be setting yourself up for disaster. You'll make a settlement. And most of us already have. What kind of settlement have you made with your life? When you make settlements out of court, that means you decided to take something less than what you originally wanted. <clears throat> so, the reason why you settled outside the court and settled for something that for less, because you didn't believe that you could get it. So you settled out of court. Many of us are making in-life settlement. We are settling for less than what we actually deserve. We don't feel good about it, but we make it work. We make it work in our lives. We come up with some kind of excuse to make it all right. What kind of settlement have you made with your life? You settle for what you, you settle for less than what you want out of life. And you got to stop doing that. But this is going to be a continued topic. And this concludes this little short video. This is Maul. I'm out of here. Macrofragal like a piece, piece, piece.